Hey, don't want that across the back of the mic like that. <laughs> Just want to say thank you very much, everybody, for turning up today. Um, I'm one of the first speakers. My name's Trev Coleman. My name's Trev Coleman. Um, right. Oh, yeah, we've got right. Um, my first thing that I want to talk about today is obviously the politics and all of this. Now, we all know we're getting fucked over on this particular debate, and we all know that cannabis isn't the Schedule One substance. However. How many people realise that the coppers are actually the ones who are getting fucked over most in this? Right, how many, how many people here are working at the minute? Stick your hand up if you're working. Right? Now, if you're working in the UK, did you know that the, that you're already getting taxed on this industry? Yeah, uh, it. Yeah, now uh, what happened was in 2014, David Cameron and George Osborne added the economy, the black market for sex and drugs to the economy. They valued that market at the time at around about £10 billion. Now, uh, the way, obviously, the people who are working in that industry in this country, they're not paying taxes on it. So, what they did was they, they treated it sort of like car insurance. You know, like um, how in, uh, if you're dry, if you've got car insurance, part of your premium goes towards paying for uninsured drivers. Well, they did exactly the same with taxes. So they took the taxes from the black market and they put it on anybody who's working. You're paying for it. Now, the coppers... <laughs> now, you think about this. They're, cur they're currently going out and they're kicking in doors for an industry that they're paying taxes on. But it gets better because the leading form of debt in this country at the minute is council tax. Now, as anybody knows, council tax goes towards, towards paying for the police. So, not only are they paying the council taxes, which is contributing towards their wages, but they're kicking in doors for an industry that's, that they're paying taxes on. <laughs> it's an absolutely ludicrous situation that we find ourselves in. I mean, the politics around this plant is unreal. Uh, right now, we've got an NHS on its knees, but THCV, just one cannabinoid out of over 400, can save the NHS £47 billion per year. What biggest spend at the minute is on obesity and diabetes, yet THCV is being shown to regulate blood sugar and lower insulin resistance. Uh, we should be farming this stuff on a massive scale. We should, I, mean, I, I really don't get what's going on with our country at the minute. We all know that the Tories are taking the piss out of us, so as far as I'm concerned, right now, CPS guidelines say that nine plants, nine to 12 plants is a personal growth. Now, you know, for the 9 to 12 plants, you're going to get exactly the same caution as what you would get for one joint or a 20 bag. Where the way I see it, you might as well get hung for a sheep as a lamb. Now, especially at the minute when cancer rates are currently stood at 1 in 2, women six times more likely to develop it than men, and paediatric cancers have gone up 40% in the last 16 years. Where NHS is on, our knee, on its knees, each and every person here could be growing and helping to contribute towards saving it. This is a new form of social care, this is a massive industry. Just last year, 53 in America, 125,000 jobs cleared £53 billion worth of cannabis. That industry is expected to treble by 2020. You're talking half a million jobs in a $200 billion industry whilst we're all sat here going through prohibition and austerity. You know, you've got this. End, this industry is vital, and as far as I'm concerned, give it to the people of the northeast. We'll give you an industry to be proud of. And there's one man here in particular who I'd like to introduce now, who I can see benefiting from it massively. One of the hardest working guys out there. He goes out there. He's out there every single day, giving treating over a hundred kids in the UK with terminal diagnosis for cancer. Now, please welcome everybody, Jeff Ditchfield of Bud Buddies. Woo! 
Hello Durham, nice to be here and nice to have a nice day as well. It's normally raining when I come up this part of the world. Okay, so my name is Jeff Ditchfield. I represent an organization called budbuddies.co.uk, which you can check out on the web. And we've been assisting people with medical cannabis now for over 15 years. In the last five years, we've been concentrating on people suffering from cancer. And in the, recently, we've had to focus on helping parents with terminally ill children. So at the moment, we're assisting over uh, the parents of over 100 seriously and terminally ill children here in the UK. The youngest um, terminal cancer sufferer we're assisting is only two years old. And here today, we have one of our Younger Bud Buddies members and his mom, Callie Blackwell, who I'm sure many of you have seen on TV recently. She has a great book out. And she talks about her journey with Darren, her son, his journey with cancer, his two cancers in fact, and how uh, she attributes cannabis to saving his life twice. And that's the important thing for me, is cannabis definitely has medicinal value, and that's what we all need to promote. We all know someone who's suffering from cancer, and it's obvious that uh, cannabinoids, especially THC and CBD, both have anti-cancer properties. So I consider it essential that people in our community who require access to cannabis oil to treat their serious illnesses should be able to get it. And in my mind, the best way of supplying that is through cannabis social clubs or cannabis compassion clubs, where people can come together, like the Durham Cannabis Club, join, support your local club, and help all your neighbors and your friends and people in your community who need you. We need people growing strains to treat cannabis. We need to teach people how to make effective cannabis oils to treat cancer and serious illnesses. And the best way to do that is through the clubs. As um, Trev was uh, saying, the police are under tremendous pressure at the moment. Um, they've all had their budgets cut by 20%. and. They're not interested in uh, chasing after people who are using cannabis medicinally, and they're not even bothered about people using it recreationally these days. So I think the great thing with the clubs is, it's like what happened in Spain. Um, at first, the clubs were raided. The associations in Spain were raided. And then when the authorities found out how they were being run, how they were responsible, that's when they backed off. And I think that's what we need here in the UK. But there's no point sitting around waiting for the government to decriminalize cannabis. It's not gonna happen. We have to make it happen. It's 50 years ago um, this year that um, homosexuality was decriminalized here in the UK. Now, that didn't come about uh, because the government decided they were infringing people's human rights. That was brought about by activists fighting and that's what we need here. And the best way to fight is through your local cannabis club. And if there isn't a club in your area, well, get together with some friends, have a joint, and plan on how you're going to open one. And I hit see that's how we can progress here in the UK. If the NHS can't supply cannabis oil to terminal cancer patients, then we can. And that's what we should do. So let's come together, support your local clubs, become a part of your club, and let's take this and let's help the people in our community who need us. The parents with terminally ill children, the cancer patients who are dying. Let's put an end to this. They're our friends, family, and our neighbors, and we need to help them. Thank you very much. kind of introduced me. Uh, my name is Callie Blackwell and I am the mother of Darren Blackwell who, although many of you may have heard about him, he's, he has been in the media quite a lot recently. Um, basically I could give you a... Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wrote a book with his entire story in it. Um, mainly my, my, my reasons for writing the book was 
I want I want it to be normal. I want people to understand that there's something they can do for themselves when they're diagnosed with cancer. Because ultimately, at the moment, the you know the statistics are one in two now. We all know somebody. We're all going to know somebody. We could even many of you sitting here today could one day be struck down by cancer. And unfortunately, when you get stuck in the system, you're told that you have to do what they tell you to do. And and I wrote a book to prove that actually you don't have to do. You you can if you want to, but there are other opportunities and there are other other things that you can do to help yourself. Um, I also wanted to write a book because um, I wanted people to understand that it has medicinal qualities, whether they'll tell you in the government that it doesn't. Um, I've just come back from Spain, actually, where I went to Madrid University and I met Dr. Christine Sanchez and uh, Guillermo Vesce uh, I always get his name wrong, I'm so sorry. Uh, Guillermo, Guillermo Valesco. Valesco, thank you. I'm so sorry, Guillermo. Um, <clears throat> and both these... Um, researchers have been have been looking into cannabinoids and cancers for for decades and you know it was it was very strange to me that I was sat 2,000 miles away talking about cannabinoids and cancer and how it works and I was told exactly how they see the cancer cells dying in the petri dishes when THC is added to them and yet 2,000 miles away in this country apparently it has no medicinal benefits now I don't know what else to do than get out there get on TV talk about it tell people my story I'm hoping that with this kind of activism and, and, you know, if everybody can become active and just make it normal, you know, I, I now are quite happily smoke in public because it's normal. If we normalise it, then hopefully, eventually, it, it won't be so demonised and it won't be so odd to see this kind of thing. I want to see these kinds of things popping up all over the place. And as Jeff said, the movement, I feel, is going to come within the, within the social clubs. All get together, become massive, become so big that they can't ignore you any longer. Um, for the sake of, you know, the sake of us all and for the sake of these kids, I've met so many children now in the UK that, that are benefiting from cannabis. But they have to be quiet. They can't say anything because they are facing social <laughs> services. They're facing having their children taken from them and facing prison time just for trying to help their children. So hopefully by me standing up and, and, and telling people what I did with my son, I hope that it inspires other people to do the same. And yeah, <laughs> I don't really know what else to say, but thanks all for coming and thanks for inviting me to speak. Thank you. <laughs> I am absolutely stoned off my gourd. Someone gave me a dab just before getting here, so it's, I really apologise. <laughs> it was very nice though over in that corner. <laughs> I was also going to say, guys, um, we can talk again later. We could bang on and for hours and hours, but it's a nice day. I can see people enjoying themselves and relaxing, so I think we should get back to the music. What do you reckon?